All right, in this video, I want to talk about a pretty, uh, I think, real-life example. So suppose you've got a 10-year loan that you're going to take out, and you've got two options. You can either borrow money at 3.6% that's compounded daily, or you can borrow money at 3.7%, but it's compounded quarterly. So you've got a lower interest rate compounded more often versus a higher interest rate compounded less frequently. So we want to know which one of those is better. So I'm going to use our formula here, A equals P uh, times 1 plus R over M raised to the M times T. Notice we don't have any starting principle in this case, but you can really just make one up. Um, it's, it's really kind of irrelevant as long as we use the same principle in both, in both cases. So I'm going to use my formula here. So for part A, let's just maybe assume we, we take out, I don't know, suppose, uh, suppose we take out a loan of $100. So in that case, that would be the starting principal. Um, one plus, so the rate is 3.6%. As a decimal, we'll write that as 0 0.036. The number of compounding, since we're doing it daily, we'll divide by 365. And then we take uh, 365. And again, they don't tell us, uh, they tell us 10 years, and we can use 10, you could even use one year. Um, if A is cheaper over the course of one year, for example, it would be cheaper over the course of 10 years as well. But since T is uh, 10 years, let's go ahead and plug in 10. So let's see if we can't simplify this one down, if I can't squeeze it all in. I'm going to do a few steps here at once. So I'm going to do 0 0.036 divided by 365. Okay, so that's that very small number, 0 0.00409863. I'm going to add 1 to that. That's going to be the number inside the parentheses. So 1.12340 It's going to be raised, if we multiply 365 by 10, we'll get 3,650. So let's see, I'm going to raise this to the 3650 power. Okay, so I'm getting 1.433303986. I'm just going to write them all down. And if you multiply that by, uh, say, 100, we're going to get, we'll just move the decimal place over twice. We'll get 143, and then we'll round it off. We'll say 33. Okay, so um, let's look at the other example, uh, the other problem. So suppose, uh, so what this final amount really represents, let's talk about this real quick. The idea is if you borrow $100, you know, to the, to the bank, you're now like the bank because they're depositing $100 into you um, at these rates, and they're saying, well, at the end of 10 years, you're going to have to basically pay us back $143.33. Part B will do uh, everything very similarly. So again, let's assume we start with the same principle of $100. 1 plus the rate, which in this case is 0 0.037. We're doing it quarterly, so we'll divide by 4. And then we'll take 4 times 10 to get our, our exponent. So we have 100, um, let's see. <clears throat> so we get 0 0.037 divided by 4. We'll add 1 to that, so I'm getting 1.00925 raised to the 40th power. So let's see, if I take that and raise that number, let's say, to the 40th power, so raise to the 40th power, uh, I'm getting 1.44527123. Four fours. So if we multiply that by 100, again we'll just move the decimal place two places. I'm getting 144. Um, we'd have 0.527. So I'm going to round that off to 53. Again, both of these were approximate. We did round off a little bit, but it says at the end of uh, in in part B, at the end of the loan, you're going to owe 144 dollars and some change, whereas in part A, you only owed 143 dollars and some change. So to you, the consumer, you would want to take, at least in this case, that lower interest rate uh, that's compounded more frequently.